This video will show how to compute the Laplace transform of the unit step function from the integral definition of the Laplace transform. The utility of this exercise is to make clear how this integral definition works, explain the relationship between the bilateral and the unilateral Laplace transform, and show why the region of convergence is important in the bilateral Laplace transform. So let's begin. The unit step function looks like this. It has a value of 1 for values of t greater than 0 and a value of 0 for values of t less than 0. I'll denote the Laplace transform of the unit step function as capital U of s. The integral definition of the Laplace transform is this integral. In this integral, I can replace the lower limit of integration by 0. The reason for this is that u of t is 0 for values of t less than 0. So the product of u and t and e to the minus st is 0 for values of t less than 0. For t greater than 0, u of t is 1, and I have just the integral of e to the minus st. Okay, as an important side note, the integral that I've defined here is the bilateral Laplace transform. When I take into account the fact that the unit step function is 0 for values of t less than 0, I end up having, in this case, a unilateral Laplace transform because the limits are from 0 to infinity. So for the unit step function, the bilateral and unilateral transforms are the same thing. This is actually true in general for signals that are 0 for values of t less than 0. Their unilateral and their bilateral Laplace transforms will be the same. So let's work the integral. This is an integral with respect to t. The minus s is a constant in terms of the variable of integration, which is t. So I get 1 over that constant times e to the minus st evaluated at 0 and infinity. e to the minus st evaluated at 0, well, I plug 0 in for t and get e to the 0, which is 1. What about e to the minus st evaluated at infinity, which is the upper limit of integration? This is the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the minus st. s is a complex number. Its real part is sigma, and its imaginary part is j omega. So I can write e to the minus st as e to the minus sigma plus j omega, that whole thing, times t. I can break this into the product of e to the minus sigma t times e to the minus j omega t. To figure out the limit, we need to understand what this part of the product is going to do. If sigma is greater than 0, so that minus sigma t gets more negative as t approaches infinity, then this term is going to approach 0 as t approaches infinity. The term e to the minus j omega t requires a little more thought. You'll recall from Euler's formula that this is the cosine of negative omega t plus j sine of negative omega t. So this has a real part and an imaginary part. The magnitude of the real part is always between minus 1 and 1 because it's a cosine, and the magnitude of the imaginary part is also always between minus 1 and 1 because it's a sine. And this is true no matter what value of t I choose. So both the real and imaginary parts are between 1 and minus 1. This guy here is approaching 0 as long as sigma is greater than 0. And this term has values that are bounded. So the product of these two is going to approach 0 as t approaches infinity. So what that says is that this limit is equal to 0 as long as sigma is greater than 0. If sigma is less than 0, then this limit doesn't exist. Um, minus sigma t is greater than 0, so as t gets large, this gets even larger. So if sigma is less than 0, then the limit doesn't exist at all. So to summarize what we've developed so far, we have 0, the lower limit of the integral, giving 1, while the upper limit gives 0 as long as sigma is greater than 0. So the integral is minus 1 over s times 0 minus 1, which is just 1 over s. 
And this, then, is the functional form of the Laplace transform of the unit step. Now, the region of convergence for this Laplace transform is, by definition, the set of values of s in the complex plane for which the limit as t goes to infinity exists. And the requirement that we have for this term to go to 0 is that sigma be greater than 0. So in this case, my region of convergence is this area that I've shaded in. Okay. I can actually define a different function that will have the same algebraic Laplace transform, that is, it'll end up with a 1 over s, but a different region of convergence. And the way we do this is the following. This is going to look like a function that no one in their right mind would use, but mathematically it's, it works. We'll define x of t to be minus u of minus t. And this looks like this. It has a value of minus 1 for values of t less than 0, and a value of 0 for values of t greater than 0. So let's just go ahead and compute the Laplace transform and see what we get. The definition of the bilateral Laplace transform is this. When we look at x of t, it is 0 for values of t greater than 0, so that means the upper limit of integration is 0. Between minus infinity and 0, x of t is equal to minus 1. So the integral becomes the integral from minus infinity to 0 of minus 1 times e to the minus st dt. And I work this integral to get minus 1 times minus 1 over s times e to the minus st, and this is evaluated at minus infinity and 0. We do the easy limit first. If I plug 0 in for t, I get 1. The harder limit is the limit as t approaches negative infinity of e to the minus st dt. So again, you need to remember that s is a complex number. If sigma is greater than 0, then minus sigma is less than 0, and minus sigma times t gets really big as t approaches negative infinity. So in order for the integral to converge, I need to have that sigma is less than 0, so that minus sigma is greater than 0. Then this term, the minus sigma t, goes, uh, gets very large negative, and e to that goes to 0. So I can end up writing the whole thing then as 1 over s times 1 minus 0, which is just 1 over s. And so the somewhat strange result is that the algebraic form for the Laplace transform is the same as we got by taking the Laplace transform of the unit step function. But the thing that's different is that my condition on sigma for the limit to go to 0 is that sigma is less than 0. So this means that the region of convergence is the region where sigma is less than 0. So it's going to be this region. So the signals Laplace transform has a different region of convergence. Okay. Now, in doing this, we've used the bilateral transform, okay, because I'm integrating from minus infinity to infinity. If I were to try to use the unilateral transform for this particular signal, my lower limit would be 0 and the integral would be 0. So here's a case where the unilateral transform is different from the bilateral transform. And just to make sure it's clear, even though we got the same algebraic form, we had to take into account that the region of convergence was different, and that's what differentiated between the two time wave forms that both ended up giving us 1 over s. This is something that typically, as engineers, we don't worry about that much because we almost always assume that our signals are 0 for values of t less than 0. So, in any case, hopefully this has been useful, and this concludes this video.